All right, I'm gonna say it out right now. You do not need a MIDI keyboard in order to make music. So in this video, I'm going to explain what MIDI keyboards are, my journey over the last 10 years trying to find a good keyboard, and why I am so anti-MIDI keyboard. So if by the end of this video, I haven't convinced you why you shouldn't get a MIDI keyboard, I'm gonna go ahead and turn around and list all the reasons why you should get one. So make sure to stay to the end if you wanna hear what I have to say about that. All right, first off, what is a MIDI keyboard? MIDI stands for Musical Instrument digital interface. Today it's used as a way to send musical information to your computer. So there's roughly four main pieces of information that's being sent from the MIDI keyboard to the computer. They are which note was played, how hard it was pressed, when it started being pressed, and when it stopped being pressed. I've been in music production for a long time. I've made music on Logic, FL Studio, Ableton, Garage Band, and all of that time I've been trying to tweak my setup little by little, trying to figure out which MIDI keyboard I like. So I've gone through about three all different styles of keyboard, and I do not like them. I am anti-MIDI keyboard. This is the war on MIDI keyboards. I do not think they are as useful as people say they are. I've yet to find something that is affordable, not bulky, and not an eyesore. And I know of something that can do basically 90% of a MIDI keyboard's job, and wait for it, it's free. That's right. I'm talking about the best keyboard. I'm talking about a computer keyboard. That's right. I am team computer keyboard. And let me tell you why. So on Ableton and Logic, there is a shortcut you can press that turns on musical typing. I've yet to figure out if that's the case in FL Studio. But basically what it does is it turns your keyboard into a MIDI keyboard and you can just play notes and test out notes that way. So if you're trying to make a preset in a synthesizer and you need to test out the note, you can just turn on musical typing and just test out the different tones. And there you go, you don't need a MIDI keyboard. It's not great at playing chords, you can only play like couple chords before you start running out of notes. But you've got a piano roll, you can click in notes, that shouldn't be a problem. And plus, this method is free, 100% free. When I got my first job, I was tempted to start spending money on music equipment. And I didn't know what was good, so I was just buying a MIDI keyboard here, buying a DJ controller there. There's a lot of things that you can spend money on that you won't exactly see the return on in your investment. You can spend money on better headphones, but are you actually going to get that same money back from those headphones? Are they going to provide enough value to cover the cost of them? Unless they're your very first pair of studio headphones, I doubt that you're going to make your money back solely based off of the fact that you got a different pair of headphones. But you might say, this money I have is burning a hole in my pocket and I want to spend it on something. Let me give you five music related things that would probably be a better return on an investment than a MIDI keyboard. All right, I got them right here. Production lessons. This is a good one. If you can get one-on-one -on -one lessons with a professional producer, you can get Taylor advice just to you or your songs that you're working on and that will really help take your music to the next level here's another one saving up to scale back your job to make more time for music you might want to save up money so you can put yourself in a position where you can say I'm gonna take less hours at work and I have this extra money set aside to support me while I am spending more time on music and hopefully you're doing this when your music is at a point where it is making money and time spent on it is a direct correlation to money made from that music. Another thing is just having higher quality sounds or samples. This is something that I know is a more direct correlation from money spent on high quality sounds to, you know, your track sounding better, your song sounding better, which translates to more streams or plays or eventually getting signed if that's what your end goal is. Here's another good one, saving your money for a better computer. What's really frustrating is trying to play your song back and it just stuttering back. So if you can save enough money to maybe build your own computer that has a crazy good CPU, you're gonna be in a better spot to make music. And then the fifth thing that I would recommend is using that money to buy your time back. For example, you could pay someone to mix and master your song. If you're treating this as a business, the more time you can spend on the core part of your business, which is making songs, not the mixing and the mastering of them. The more time you can spend making music, the better off you're gonna be. All right, you've made it to the end. This is why you should get a MIDI keyboard. If you already know a little bit about music theory or you're willing to put in the time to learn about different chords, or if you're not quick at clicking a MIDI in your piano roll, or you just find the overall experience unpleasant, and if you care more about function than form in your workspace, then I would recommend a MIDI keyboard for you. Especially if you can have one of those desks where the MIDI keyboard just slides underneath and if you're not using it, it's out of sight, out of mind. This has been my rant on MIDI keyboards and 
why you should not get any of them. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like these. And I'll see you in the next one.